so this video is kind of a cluster of just a handful of projects that I've recently got done that aren't beefy enough to be their own video. So in here, I will be painting a section of my dash, painting my back doors, laying the sound deadener, and tinting my windows. Hope you enjoy. This is the section of dash I'm painting. It's kind of a side panel. Um, we already had to take it out to deal with all of the wiring stuff. And since it's out, I was like, hey, might as well paint it. It'll be cute, a nice little pop of color. So we're doing it. All right, first step, sanding to rough up the plastic so the paint has something better to stick to. Once that's cleaned up, be using a universal bonding primer. Then it'll be a paint and primer. Then a clear coat. Okay, just cleaning it off with a like dish soap and water. Get all the final dust and grease off. And then we'll be ready to prime. Okay, for the back wall painting project, I'm just patching up the screw holes from removing the paneling. Then it's basically gonna be the same process of sanding down the paint that's already on it, priming it, painting it, simple enough. <laughs> Project of the day, we're getting the windows tinted. So it'll help with like privacy and temperature control and all of that fun stuff. And I'm gonna preface this by saying I'm not very good at it. So if this is something you're looking at, maybe don't watch me do it. Maybe you pay a professional to do it. It's not my forte. Anywho, I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it. First, Clean the glass, because it's a bus window, so it's pretty gnarly. And so I just used a generic glass cleaner. I have an F ton of microfiber, no fuzz rags, um, just to give it a little prelim clean. Now, I'm using this sprayer guy, which is just water and baby shampoo. Also, my dad taught me how to do this, so <laughs> this, I have nowhere to actually send you if you're looking for more information on how to do this. Um, my dad just gave me the crash course in it, so I'm just following his instruction. Anyway, water and baby shampoo. Spray it everywhere. Get it all foamy. Then, take grade like quadruple four like super duper fine steel wool and you scrub it and you got to make sure it's wet because if it's wet it won't scratch and there's like little tiny like chunks <laughs> on the glass that will like bubble your tint and everything so you want to make sure you get this off oh also this is the inside of my window if you can see the tiny you can't see the tabs inside of the window scrubbing it clean with water, baby shampoo, and steel wool. Once you get it nice scrubbed down and you feel like you're good, you take a squeegee. And also there's like kits. Like these are just Amazon kits for window tinting. And then you squeegee, paying attention to if you feel any like grittiness or like chunks. And then when you, if you do, just paint a little extra attention to it. Okay, once it's pretty damn clean, you take your tint. This is half of the roll, like width-wise, um, from the last window I did. So it's already cut, but basically you cut it so it'll fit. It's not rocket science. Um, I'm gonna start on this side, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray it, just so the tint like sticks to it. Then you lay your tint down, 
and get it butted up because I've obviously since it came off a roll, it's gonna have one side that's like perfectly straight. So I start by putting that side up to the bottom. And then getting it so that there's some overlap, keeping it as tight to that as possible. And I've been experimenting with like a bunch of different ways that to like cut this as like tight as possible. What I have found is this like straight blade thing with an X-Acto knife. So this allows me to get as tight to that seal as possible. And then I'm able to just cut right along that straight edge. Like so. So once you have it cut as close to size as possible, bigger the better also. If you're cutting it, it's easier to take more off than it is to put more back on because you can't. Anyway, so you gotta take it and you gotta find, this is by far the hardest part. You gotta find where the backing comes off, peels off. You gotta get it peeled. God, this is so annoying. Like so, okay. Before you stick this on, respray your surface because it gives you a little bit more play with it if it's wet. And also double check for any like fuzzies or hairs. And honestly, I'm just gonna do another scrub down of this. Make sure there's nothing for it to stick to. And I'm going through these rags like hotcakes. Okay. I think that looks, there's a hair. Hair has been my biggest downfall in this project. Between me shedding like a monster and constantly having Vonnegut hair on me, has not been fun. Anyway, that looks fine. So, respray. So it's nice and soggy. You're just gonna peel the tint. Carefully. And lay it down on your glass. Get it like deep. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because that's why you wet it down so you can move it. So get it as close to the edge as you can and pull her off. Spray the top so you can use your tools on it and not scratch it. Word of warning, super easy to scratch. So just be mindful of it. I have. Yeah, I've made a few mistakes before giving this video a shot. So be warned, easy to rip, easy to take huge chunks out of that you don't want because then it'll be easier to peel if it's not flush to what it's sitting against. And yeah, it's super easy to scratch and literally like not pay attention with your exacto knife and like cut out of it. Anyway, so. I could have sorted the space a little better before getting into this. So with the Amazon kits, we have these little blue things that have, 
it's like a felt pad. Okay. <clears throat> so get it flush on that straight side. And then I just take this guy and just do kind of a cursory squoosh out. There's gonna be air bubbles. You're just trying to get it as taut as possible to your glass and get as much of that air and stuff out as you can. And then once it's like pretty flush I do wipe it down just a little bit like I still keep it kind of wet just because less scratchable when it's wet and look it's just hard to see where there's like the bubbles and stuff when it's sudsy and soaking wet so I do that and then there's going to be little chunks where you didn't cut it quite tight enough but now that it's like laying completely flat you're able to go back with your tool and cut it down. And like these cuts I'm making, or like, you can't even see it. Like slivers, tiny, tiny slivers to try and get this to lay as tight as possible. And then there's gonna be spots. I really fucked this piece of tint up. There's gonna be a couple lines in it from creases but whatever for doing it myself I'm saving an F ton of money and I learned a new trade and it's whatever it's whatever anyway okay so these little bubbles are what you're trying to get rid of and my boss has a bunch of these tiny little like notches in the rubber ceiling of the window. So I've just been kind of notching them out right around it and then they tend to lay flat. It's looking pretty good. You can see like this guy is a crease from me like manhandling it because it got too stuck and I needed to get that bubble out. But overall, this is a pretty good fit. But yeah, so basically I'm just doing that to all of the windows. Uh, weird miscellaneous things that I wasn't really planning on doing, but um, I think in the long run it'll be a little bit more beneficial, so I'm doing it. <laughs> okay, today we are sound editing. Step one, clean the walls, dry the walls. I didn't record myself doing that because you don't need to see that. Uh, use a degreaser, make sure they're dry, done. Next you need the sheets. Of sound editor, I chose Kelmat um, because it's cheap, has great reviews, and it's like self peel sticky, so I don't have to worry about like applying an adhesive to roll to like stick it on. And next, they recommend using like a roller to like, and there's like fancy rollers you can buy, but since majority of my surfaces are like completely flat, I'm not too worried about it, so we're gonna give this a go. Some people use a hair dryer or like a heat gun also, but since it's warm enough outside, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. And the next is scissors to cut things down to size a little bit. Uh, you don't need a whole lot of this stuff for it to be effective. So I'm just gonna kind of play it by ear. And I think like recommended is 30 to 50% of like the panel is what you need to cover. So I'll probably actually end up covering more than that to be safe because I am gonna eyeball it and ballpark it, so it's not gonna be an exact science, but should go by pretty easily, so here we go. So I'm just gonna get these cut to size. I'm just gonna half them and do like stripes.
And the instructions say construction scissors. My janky household scissors are doing just fine. Probably won't be after this, but whatever. So it recommends peeling it off little by little and like using your hands to press it down as firmly as possible. I mean, that seems pretty well stuck. Hey, hey, hey. My supervisor, that's hard as work. Uh. Oh, that's a big difference. not the best coverage of painting stuff but you know what it's not that exciting it's not that difficult it's just painting but so here's a little walkthrough of everything done this far painted all of that sound deadener tinted windows you can see the difference between that window and the one at my driver's side and the painted dash. And as you can see, the subfloors are also in, so that will be the next video. Be sure to like, subscribe, so you don't miss that, and do the other stuff you do when you like something on YouTube, and I'll see you there.